Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm on the test server. We saw a bit of a sneak peek yesterday about what's coming in this patch. Now we get to actually look at some of the stuff live and in all its glory. In fact, we can see the Bastion here, kind of with the animations going off. Zardgala passing the mallet while she has a drink of mead to um, Gaelic here to have a good old slam on the power monitor thingy. Called, what, we, what do you call this? Test of strength? Anyway, that's quite cool. We've got Armands in the middle here, chatting to Arbiter and Aethel. Not really doing much. Oh, hold on a minute. He's flipping his sword. Bit of sword balancing. They're not very clickable, though, so I don't know if these are going to be clickable and, and become an event or if it's just literally visuals like we see at Christmas. I think it's probably just going to be visuals, in which case they missed a bit of a trick. You know, they could have made this the, the hub for the fusion, and it, maybe it still is, but I doubt it. The fact that it's not clickable already says to me there's probably not going to be anything more. We've got the juggler man eater. I do like this a lot. Quite cool. We've got the sheep. I guess because our mans can cheat people. Is that the deal? Sheep over here on the left. The big fifth anniversary balloon on the right. So I'm not seeing any of the events and stuff like that. But I'm on the test server. I can see all of the new patch things coming in. Let's start with something easy. Area bonuses will be live as of this patch. So we'll now get... Grade two Iron Twins. Grade three is going to be Sand Devils and Phantoms Grove. And grade three is Cursed City as well. So, um, you know, it's hard to, to get loads of this stuff going unless you do live arena a lot. But yeah, I mean, it does mean that something like Cursed City, you could try and pump certain stats like your speed or maybe your resistance, ignore defense, things like that, which are going to really give you a certain amount of value if you're pushing those areas. And I guess in collaboration with that we've now got the marius missions as well so marius is in game i'll show you all of the champions that are in in this video including him so what sort of stuff are we asked asked to do here earn lesser oils earn lesser extracts from phantoms groves there's a lot of gonna it's gonna be sand devil phantoms grove iron twins you see the three straight away live arena plan gold curse city they're like the main areas that you're going to be doing so anything silly in here, purchase items, all good. A couple of ascension things. It's meant as the late game missions. And people, I heard people say, you know, once you get to Marish, you probably wouldn't want him. I think that's wrong. And we'll see in a minute why, why I think that. Um, I think he's actually going to be very, very wanted as a champion. So anyway, um, crazy in here. Bunch of ascension. Some stuff is carried over, like equipping certain ascended things. If you've already got them, they're good. 2 million damage on normal, super easy. Some things are probably out of sync, like 2 million damage on, on normal. I can already do that on my free to play. Whereas I can't do, I don't think I could do some of this. Like maybe I could do stage five actually. Yeah, maybe I could do all this. But it would take me a while to do some of this stuff. Yeah, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Uh, what else have we got here? Clear hard mode, finite 20 times. Like that's way harder than anything else we've seen so far. Tame one. Mythical artifact from a dungeon. Okay. From any dungeon. So I take it that doesn't mean somewhere like Cursed City or Hydra. Mythical stuff's hard to get, honestly. That's what's the rate? What when do you start even getting it? Is it just from hard? Um, how do I see? How do I see? Do I see anything here? No, I don't think so. I think I need to go to good old raid stages tool. If you don't know this exists, hellhades.com, raid stages tool. You can come to any content in the game and see what's going down. So if I'm on normal difficulty and go to stage 25, uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Rewards. No chance of mythical here. So if I'm on hard, stage one, rewards. Yeah, so 0.34% chance of a five star. So that means you'd have to do, on average, 300 or so runs to get one mythical drop. Stage one. And on stage 10, it's way less, like 30 odd runs. So, okay. Well, obviously, that's where it starts to become pretty challenging, you know, to, to get to that type of stuff. But anyway, missions are going to be in. If you guys have already done your Arbiter missions, then it will unlock and you'll be able to pick up Marius. So I guess anything else before we go into Champions? I don't think there's anything else really in the mix here. That's that's super cool. So let's go through then and see what we've got. So we've got High Elf. I'm, I'm not going in any particular order here. We're just going to pick them up as we get them. Fina. 
uh, with this kind of like speedy looking aura steel. What's going on with this? Increase ally speed by 20%. Increase ally crit rate in all battles by 15% for high elves. So she is the faction guardian. You know, like um, Aislinn is. She's the one for high elves now. Interesting. So who else do we have for high elves that we would care about grouping together? High elves is kind of weak compared to a lot of factions nowadays. Like Belenor is quite cool, but doesn't really go with anyone else. You've got a lot of like manipulators in here, but not anything too nutty. The mythical is obviously like really good, but I guess you've got maybe like old school Tyrell and Royal Guard, those sort of champs. It's not really a faction where it's like, I'm going to, a bit like with Aeson, it was like, okay, well, there's crazy champions in that faction. Not really the case here. So way less desirable just because the rest of the faction is not nutty. Um, crazy base speed. Base stats are very high. What's going on? So we've got A1, 50, books up to 75% chance of increasing the cooldown of a random steal. We've seen this quite a bit at the moment on A1s. It's, it's a strong A1. When counterattacking with this skill, team up with a random ally to use their default as well. So she must have some sort of way to counterattack. She gets another ally in the mix. Uh, we've got her A2 here, books to three turn. Puts block debuffs, block damage, and counterattack on a target ally. If the target of this skill is not her, resets the cooldown of all of their skills as well. Damn, that's actually pretty cool. Block damage, counterattack, block debuffs. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. And then the A3 here. So, Exalted Lineage um, places increased attack, increased crit rate, and increased crit damage on all allies for two turns. So, you're getting 30% here. If you're a faction ally, you get another 15%. So that means you're up to 45% crit rate. All you need to do is put 55% more crit rate on your team and you're maxed. That's actually kind of nuts. Um, so what's going on with this? High elves, if you've got one faction ally, grants an extra turn, I guess on this skill. Two faction allies before placing the buffs does a full cleanse. And if you've got three faction allies, buffs placed cannot be removed. And that's on a three-turn cooldown. Again, if you've got a faction worth of champs here, it's nuts. It is nuts. But the, the champions in this faction are not as crazy. Um, passive as well here. Whenever a buff placed by, the, by an ally, whenever a buff is placed on an ally, sorry, gives them a turn meter fill. So three buffs, that's going to give you a, near enough a 10% turn meter fill with that A three and you've got the same thing going on here so she's giving you a bit of turn to fill as well and then if you've got one ally allies deal 25 percent more damage when attacking out of their turn so using this counter attack 25 percent more damage two allies whenever a buff is removed or stolen or when it expires get a turn 10 percent turn to fill again you've got three buffs here three buffs here that's like potentially 60 percent turn to fill going on and then if Three allies. Allies ignore 5% defense for each buff on them. So potentially, if she's buffing the same person, potentially a 30% ignore defense as well. They're crazy. These faction dudes and dudesses are crazy. <laughs> okay, let's have a look then. So we've got obviously Armands. Um, don't think we've got anything else in here. Armands is going to be the fusion. I've already spoken about how nutty he is. He's got a high base speed as well, 108. I will do a video separately testing him because I think he's going to be an exceptional champion because of this skill, the A2. Steals all turn meter from a target, except people under sheep, and stuns them for a turn. It's kind of nuts. Kind of nuts. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. He's got a lot of other stuff going on as well, increasing cooldown of steals, ability to sheep someone, and buff cleanse going to test this out as well see if he can get through stone skin with this um but ultimately he will be a game changer for just about anyone playing the game even like high-end players so amans uh, let's have a look in the ogren tribes here we've got the mythical gizmak the terrible crazy base defense 115 base speed to support straight on with this guy then so a1 attacks an enemy increases the duration of burns on a target by a turn if they're not under a burn, decrease the duration of two buffs instead. Cannot be resisted if he's 
if he crits. So no accuracy required if he crits. Then attacks all en enemies not under burn, except the initial target. Decreases the duration of two buffs on all of them if he crits. Damn. So if you only got one burn ticking, he's basically going to be removing all buffs with no accuracy required. A2 then, AoE. Hooks to a three turn. Before attacking, increases the duration of all burns. Then instantly activates burns. Cannot be resisted if he's got 100% crits. Finally, increases duration of all debuffs on all enemies by a turn. Puts decreased speed on them if he and needs no accuracy again. Then the A3 here gives a crit damage, crit rate, and speed buff for all allies for three turns on a four turn cooldown. Yikes. Um, passive then. Spark of Anger. For the start of this champion's turn, puts a burn on all enemies. Occurs once per round. Cannot be resisted if he's got 100% crit. Also, before the start, 50% chance of placing a burn on all enemies for one turn. Hold on a sec. Before the start of this champion's turn, places burn for his turn. Places a burn for two turns on all enemies. Occurs once per round. And then at the start of his turn. So when you first go into battle, he's going to put burn everywhere. Actually kind of good for arena against stone skin, by the way. And then when he takes a turn, there's still a 50% chance that he's going to replace burns out there. Cannot be resisted. Wow. That form is kind of mental. Kind of absolutely mental. Right. <laughs> We've then got form change. He turns into the, the big boy with the totem pole. The kind of fiery totem. Let's have a look at this guy. He's got his tambourine. Don't worry about that. What is that? It's like a face type of thing, is it? Is that meant to actually be something else? Not sure. It looks kind of cool, though. Yeah, as ever, great artwork. I love the kind of like Beetlejuice head at top, flame eyes, tusks coming out. Very cool, very cool. Crazy base defense here. Uh, just crazy all in all. So he becomes an HP-based champion here. All of his damage is based on HP and defense. What was it in the other form? Damage is based off attacks. So it's quite hard to build. What is he? Like, you're still not an attack champion in this form. He's still going to be... You just need to make sure he gets 100% crit, basically. So all his damage is coming from his skills, not his hits. But in this form, you get damage based on HP and defense. So attacks an enemy. If, he's, if this champion's HP or the initial target's HP is equal or lower than 50%, attacks all enemies. So if anyone's low health, him or his target, then he attacks all enemies instead. Increases the duration of two random debuffs on a target by a turn. If attacking all enemies, increases the duration of two random debuffs by turn instead. This effect cannot be resisted if it's a crit. So that's following through both forms, which is kind of mental. AoE here. Before attacking gives himself increased defense, which gives him a damage boost. Um, so before attacking... Play no, sorry. Doesn't. Before attacking puts decreased defense on all enemies. Cannot be resisted if they're under a burn. Places an extra hit on enemies under burn. And gets an extra turn if he kills someone. Kaboom, that's called. I bet that does a phenomenal amount of damage. I bet it does absolutely silly damage numbers. Got here, what's this? Pain Link. Three turn cooldown. Places Pain Link on a target for two turns. Cannot be removed, blocked, or resisted. When calculating damage inflicted by Pain Link, 75% of the attacker's skill multiplier is reflected. So if you've got an attack multiplier of, say, three, well, and you've got an attack of 7k, I guess that's going to reflect 21k damage, like true damage. The damage cannot uh, ignores defense. Yeah, so it's just going to go in as a straight, can't crit anything like that. It's just going to go in as a straight hit. Interesting. Interesting. Also places taunt and unkillable. So basically what he's doing is he's anyone who's doing a single target hit will definitely hit him. And that hit will reflect back the attack times multiplier as a flat damage amount on whoever you've got pain link on. So let's say you put pain link on a duchess, for example, or a crisk or whatever, and you get hit by a candy. Well, candy's multiplier goes back into duchess and takes her out. Very cool. I like that ability a lot. Uh, what's the passive here? Ignores 15% target defense 
if this champion's HP or the target is greater than 50%. So the high health, he's ignoring defense. If this champion's HP or the target's HP is less than 50, ignores even more defense. We'll also ignore block damage, shield, when people have got burn out there. Inflicts 20% more damage to enemies not under burn. It's quite complex, I'll be honest. Like it's, it's quite a bit of if this, if that, if that, if that. But kind of cool kit. Not that we don't get him, he's a mythical. I mean, I've had one mythical and probably not one of the worst ones, honestly. But yeah, anyway, there you go. Um, what else have we got? Undead. Okay, so Undead. This is the epic for the fusion, as far as I can guess it. There's only one epic on this, um, on this account, which is the test server. Normally, they give us all of the fusion epics. So I'm guessing that this guy's going to have to be collected four times to make your fusion. I'm guessing that's what they're doing. There's a mummy. Kafru the Death Keeper. That is a mammoth big shield. Look at that. Got his mummy on his shield. Damn. Again, cool. Look. Oh, look, he's got daggers just coming out of the back. He feels no pain. Got spare weapons sticking in him. What's going on here then? Massive defense. Defense based champ. So, attacks an enemy on his A1. Bone Gladius. 50% chance of transferring one random debuff from this champion to the target. Okay, books to 70%. It's an okay A1. A2 attacks all enemies. Books to three turn. Before attacking, removes a random debuff from all allies. The mini cleanse. And you get more damage per debuff removed. So maximum of 20% more damage, basically. Or just Hydra 25. Also heals each ally by 10% of his max HP if he, if, if he removes a debuff. That's pretty cool, actually. I like that. Uh, A3 then puts unkillable on him for, for one turn and a taunt for two turns on a four turn call. Yeah, I guess he can jump into some like clan boss stuff, tanking up the stun, becoming unkillable. Probably could do some work on Hydra as well. It's okay. It's, it's decent. I wouldn't say crazy good. Passive here decreases the damage all allies receive by 10%. That's quite nice as a straightforward damage reduction. But he's tanking that up instead, which is nasty. <laughs> I guess if he's got unkillable on and he's tanking it up, then that's quite nice. But yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think of this, this epic? I think he's like mid. I wouldn't say he's, he's great. I uh, certainly wouldn't be saying, you know, get this guy instead of Armand's. Um, okay, one more to go then, I think. And that is going to be Padrag. Padrag? Uh, Grand Oak Padrag. I'm sure there's probably like an Irish way to say that. Okay, what's going on here? We've got the green beard Gandalf kicking in. Uh, he's actually, I, I can't remember the name, but there's another wizard that like rides around with rabbits and stuff in um, the Hobbit films. I don't know what his name is, but it kind of looks a bit like him. Cool staff. Look at that staff. Wizard of the forest. He's got himself a little sickle there. Cool looking dude. He's got his bells just in case. Um, right. What's going on here? Quite <laughs> fast again, like another support, I guess. Yeah. Good stats again. Quite high base attack for a support. A1 attacks an enemy. 25% chance of decreasing cooldown of random ally steals by two turns. They're loving this cooldown reduction stuff going on right now. That books to a 50% chance. A bit like the fusion we just had, right? Um, A2 teams up with all allies to attack one enemy. So ally attack, the allies will use their default skills, that's normal. Also fully restores all allies destroyed max HP. That's pretty cool, actually. That's like a nice Hydra mechanic there. Four turn cooldown, ally attack the whole team, which is kind of unusual with this nice um, removing destroyed max HP. It's interesting. It's an interesting mechanic. I'm not going to say it's brilliant, but anyone who attacks with their whole team is quite good. Good for finite hard as well. And then we've got a turn meter fill on a three turn. Removes all debuffs from all allies and then places increased speed. Turn meter fill, cleanse, increased speed. That's a great skill. Right? That's a really good skill. Then we've got a passive here. At the start of this champion's turn, places a buff on each ally depending on their type. If it's an attack champ, increased attack, defense, increased defense. Support, increased accuracy, HP, a shield equal to 30% of their ally HP. I love that. 
at the start of this champion's turn. I love that. What a, what a great passive that is. That's one of the best passives in the game. I love it. That is absolutely brilliant. What a well thought out passive. Well done. Whoever thought that one out, that's actually brilliant. I love it. Um, and then we got speed in dungeons, which is uh, it's a shame that's not all battles, honestly. Okay, so one I nearly forgot about was Marius the Gallant here. So we've seen him in a kind of like graphic. So I just wanted to check out his base speed 110. And I wanted to show you why I think most people are going to love this dude. So we know he's got Unfeeble on his A1, which is pretty nuts. AoE and Feeble is going to be silly. His A2 attacks all enemies three times, three times, and it's an enemy max HP hit on a three turn cooldown whilst decreasing the duration of enemy buffs. Oh my God. The power creeps through the roof right now. Like, move aside a Krizia for Hydra. This guy is going to be absolutely insane. The A3, increased accuracy, increased defense for the whole team for three turns and goes again. And then is passive. Immune to turn meter reduction, so brilliant for a mischief tank, and immune to decrease speed. Whenever an enemy changes form or attempts to decrease his champion's turn meter, he counterattacks, which is um, cool for Amius as well. Holy smokes! He is going to be absolutely nuts. So, a bunch of new champions, a few new bits and bobs in the game. Let me know what you think down below, and also let me know are you all in? For this fusion. There you go, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you soon.